Hey guys, Pogo here. Welcome to episode number three of uh, the Economy mini series. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to make the balance top command. Uh, basically, it will, re it will return the top ten or so balances uh, for uh, you know for like. So if you type in you know eco top, it'll go through and it'll find the top. 10, the people, top 10 people with the highest balances, and it will print them out. I can't talk today. So, uh, basically, this was actually a lot harder than I thought. When I saw the comment, I figured that it would be a cool thing to do and a little bit of a challenge. So I sat down to try to do it, and I did it one way. And I tried it, and it didn't completely work. It, it sort of worked, but not really. So... Then I decided to try again, and I sat down for a while, and it, it, it did take me a while to figure out how to do it, but this is the code right here, and this is basically, um, as you can see, a test of my idea uh, of how to do this. So if I go ahead and run it, you'll take a look at the console. Uh, that's what everything's going to do. So enter the number of data lines you will enter. So we're going to go ahead and do three. So you want to enter a username and the money amount like this. So dollar and then username. So the amount of money. So I went ahead and said for us, for a user stick has 300, user 29 has 29, and uh, Pogo has 30. So when I go ahead and run it, and then I hit quit to end it, you will see it prints out 300 stick, 30, Pogo, and 29. 29. As you can see, I entered it as 329.30, but it did correctly sort it into 330 and then 29. So let me just quickly explain to you guys how this works, and then we're going to adapt the code into a uh, command, a top command. So, first thing that I do is I declare a scanner. Basically, that's used to read input from the console. I have my array list of strings, that's the data that I take in from the user, and then I have an integer, which is the number of lines. So I just say enter the number of data lines you will enter, and I all you have to know about that is it takes, it parse, it gets an int, so if I enter three, then it sets lines equal to three. So then I have this loop right here that will keep, it'll basically run forever. Uh, it Essentially, this would run forever, but it doesn't, because first thing, it prints out, uh, enter a username and money amount, so dollar and username, uh, then it gets the uh, line that they entered. If it's not equal to quit, then we add it to the list of data, otherwise we break, which basically stops the loop, which means that it will go on forever until they enter quit, and then it will stop, so it's not really an infinite loop, it could be. Then we close the scanner, because we don't need it anymore. Now, this is where I had the most problem, most problems. Um, collections uh, and arrays are two awesome classes that have really, uh, really useful methods for, um, you know, collections and arrays. Um, so collections has this cool method called sort, and you can go ahead and pass it um, like a collection, so a list, like I'm passing it data, and it will basically uh, go ahead and sort it. Now... Um, I did originally try calling collections.sort and just passing it data, but it did not correctly sort everything. I think if I had an array list of integers, it would work correctly, but I also need the username. I need the amount of money and the username. So I had to use this little workaround. So I declared a, um, a new comparator of string. Basically, all you need to know about this is whenever it runs, this compare method basically goes through and it gets... Because remember, the sample input could be like 30 in Pogo. So, um, so basically, it co so when it goes to compare one data point to another data point, it first gets the values, which is like the first part as an integer, so it'll get 30. And then, you know, the other one could be 29 and 29, so it'll get 29. And then integer has a cool compare method that will basically, you know, I pass it these two integers I got, and it will compare it correctly. So... The last thing I have to do is when I sort it like this, it will sort it in uh, ascending order. So it would start at 29, then 30, then 300. So I go at, so I went ahead and in my for loop when I printed it out, um, I set i equal to lines minus 1, and while it was greater than or equal to 0, and I used i minus minus, so it would start at the end of the list, and then it would go down, which would sort it in this way, which is exactly what we want. So in order to make this work 
uh, as an actual command in the plugin, there are two things that we need to do. The first thing is we want to go into Settings Manager and um, we want to go ahead and create a method that will give us uh, all of the information, and that's very easy to do. So we want to go ahead and say, we'll make a public, uh, and I think this is going to take, I'm not exactly sure, I'm going to put it as a string array, but we'll see. Uh, and then we're going to say get values. And this will basically, we just want to return all of the values. So what we can do is we can say uh, return config dot get values and it wants a boolean. I'm not exactly um, sure what that does and I can't really check right now. Um, so it returns, okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to return a uh, map of string and object which is, and that's fine, and basically what that means is uh, the map, it's kind of like an array list and the string is the, uh, the uh, node name, so like Poga629 or blah, and the object is the value like 29 or 67. So now we have our um, get values method, and basically, you know, we're going to change this because we're just going to make it um, easier. So we're going to make it an array list of strings, and then what we're going to say is we're going to say map string object map equals, excuse me, all right, yeah, excuse me. All right. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to, so we have our map. That is basically all of the different objects in there. And then we're going to go ahead and say uh, ArrayList uh, string lines equals new ArrayList string. And this is what we're going to end up returning in the end. First, what we're going to do is we're going to say for entry string object e map dot entry set and all you need to know about that is um, map entry so an entry is basically just a class that has uh, you know two data points at a key and the value so by iterating over the entry set we're going through each entry inside of the map so we're going to go ahead and say lines dot add uh, e dot get value space E dot get key. So if the um, so if the line is Pogo six twenty nine and twenty nine, then it will add a line that says twenty nine space Pogo six twenty nine, which is exactly uh, how we did it in the example. And then we're just going to say go ahead and return lines. So this will give me all of the different values. So now we're going to go ahead and make a new command, and we're going to call it. Actually, we're just going to copy add because I'm too lazy to do the constructor and everything. So we're going to super top get top balances and we're gonna have it say um, and we're not gonna have any arguments for it so it'll be it'll just get like the top uh, 10. So when we go ahead and do the run we're gonna delete all of this and hang on. so now what we're going to do is we're going to want to copy this part. This part is important. But so now we're going to go ahead and say um, array list string data equals settings manager dot get instance dot get values. All right. And then finally, what we're going to say is. Uh, so that should be okay for everything, except that for lines, we're not going to ask them for the number of input. We're either we're going to give them um, ten, but we need to check if there because if there are only five data points and we try for ten, then it's going to give us an error. So what we actually want to do is we're going to say for int i equals, and then in here we're going to say data dot size is greater than ten question mark data dot uh, question mark 10 data dot size let me just make sure that that's correct so data dot size okay so what this is doing this I I don't exactly remember what this is called but it's basically a single line if statement 
It's the same thing as saying if data dot size is greater than 10, do something uh, else, do something or whatever. So we're saying that if so, if the data dot size is greater than 10, then we want 10 because we want to give the top 10 values. If it's not greater than 10, then we just want to go through the number of values that there actually are. And everything else should be good. We just need to remove system.out.println with uh, sender.send message. And actually, what we want to do is we want to say um, string line equals data.getI. Now we have to parse this because we're given, you know, uh, 10 and pogo stick 29. So we're going to go ahead and say string player oops, equals line.split space. Z hang on, zero, and so we have our string player, and we're gonna say balance equals line dot split space at position one. Uh, so basically, we're just splitting this line at the space, and the actually we have to switch that. So the um, so the second value at position one is the name, and the balance at uh, position zero. Uh, so bounces at position zero. Then we're going to go ahead and say send message. We'll just do it in yellow. It's information, and we're going to go ahead and say player colon so dollars bow. So it would basically say pokestick twenty nine and ten dollars in this case. And that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and delete the top test class because we kind of implemented it and you guys know how it works. We have, basically we implemented that in two parts. We have the get values method in settings manager, which is new, and we have this brand new top class, which handles the rest of it. So uh, you guys, you guys should be fine with that. And that code should work just fine. So that is all for this episode, not too long. Uh, we learned how to make the uh, balance top command that will return the top few uh, balances uh, registered in the economy plugin. This was a request by at least one person. thought it would be an interesting challenge, so I went ahead and took it. Uh, if you guys have anything else that you want to learn, please put it in the comments. I believe I got a request for scoreboard, so I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is in the next episode I'm going to show you how to um, use the balance with scoreboard, but I'm going to show you how to do it over the player's head, because um, I know that in my scoreboard video I showed you how to do it on the right side of the screen, so I can combine uh, you know, another scoreboard review with uh, showing you how to do it on top of, under the player's name instead of on the side of the screen. I think that would be interested, interesting. Uh, after that, we're, we're going to add Vault support last, so if there's anything else that you're interested in learning in this mini-series, please uh, let me know, and I will do a permissions uh, mini-series after the economy mini-series. So, um, you know, once we run out of uh, things that you guys are interested in, in this economy series, we will move on to permissions. Do not worry. I'm very interested in that as well. So, uh, if you liked this video, please click, sorry, subscribe. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you liked this video, please click the like button. Uh, make sure to let me know uh, what else you want to learn in the Economy Mini-Series, if anything. And I will see you guys soon with the next video. Goodbye.